in the days of Queen Victoria, an amateur archaeologist made an intriguing discovery underneath these Somerset fields. Two Roman mosaics. Have a look at this drawing. See the detail in that rose pattern there? Classic evidence of a Roman villa. But that's not all. Experts think there could be even better mosaics still down there, although there's a very good reason why they haven't tried to look. For the last hundred years, this whole area has been an army firing range. So for three days, the guns are going to fall silent, allowing us to finish a job that started 150 years ago. This week we're in Somerset and it's time team to the rescue. 150 years ago, archaeologists stumbled across two mosaics in fields near High Ham, which they assumed were the remains of a Roman villa. But a lot's happened since then, and when these fields aren't being used for ploughing, they're now the fallout zone for an army firing range. So the Ministry of Defence have called us in to see if the mosaics have survived. Mind you, someone might have to put a gun to Mick Aston's head to get him fired up about Roman archaeology. Mick, these aren't bad, are they? They're not bad, but they're, <clears throat> they're not as good as they could be. Well, when I said not bad, that was supposed to be English understatement. They're really very good, aren't no, they? Well, no, but they're not like the others that have turned up in the middle of Somerset in recent years. Oh. I think these are an indication that there's something far more spectacular on this site, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, really. Martin, you're the archaeologist for the MOD. You're the landowner, as it were. Do we know that these are still down there? No. We know that these were found in the 19th century near Sam's Cross, which is where we are. But because some other things were found in this field after it was ploughed a few years ago, we did some rather nice geophysical survey and got these really rather nice and strong results here, which look a little bit like the signature you'd get for a, a Roman building, a villa. So, yes, there's something here. Yes, it might be Roman. That might be where these are. So it's pretty promising, isn't it? It is, but we need a bit more clarity than this. So, you know, we need to do some more geophysics on mm. here. See if we can pick out walls a bit more clearly and then put some trenches in, see what condition it's in, and indeed whether these things are still there in the ground. Mm -hmm. But by the end of today, we should know if they're still there. You can look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Although our primary mission is to rescue the mosaics, we'll also explore the rest of the villa. Well, all villa really means in Latin is house. Helping us will be Roman expert Neil Holbrook. What he doesn't know about villas isn't worth knowing. It actually encompasses an awful lot of different things, ranging from very humble houses up to almost quite palatial, lavish structures. Which is just as well, because larger villas can be a daunting challenge to unravel, with a jumble of rooms, bathhouses and underfloor heating systems. And the Victorian plan and the MOD survey hint at exactly that. So, despite the cold weather, we're keen to get stuck in straight away. But fussy old geophys need to do their own radar survey first. Yeah, but it takes you 2,000 years to do the survey, doesn't it? And that hasn't gone down well with one archaeologist straining to be let off the leash. Why don't we just dig a hole? <laughs> Any idea who? How much more you got to do? Well, um, if you stop talking to me, I'll be done in about five minutes. Oh, come on, it's hardly rocket science pushing that thing up and down a grass field, is I it? I make it look easy. See, now, look, look you're holding up the other piece. Oh, God. <laughs> another one? <laughs> I'll put another probe on the end, right? There you go, Steve. Hey? <laughs> Better. Oh. Oh, he really doesn't get technology, does he? <laughs>
Fortunately, the Geophys is worth the wait. What we've done is we've resurveyed a small area, and I mean, the results are just so clearly. It just has to be villa building. All the wall lines, corridors, rooms, a whole mass of responses. How deep down do you reckon this stuff is? I think it's pretty shallow, probably not more than, you know, half a metre. The Geophys hints at dozens of rooms, any of which could hold the mosaics. But one spot in the corner looks particularly promising. So in goes Trench One. <laughs> and oh, look, someone's happy. Bless. And almost immediately, Phil and Neil find something rather special. Oh, no, then. What's in Oh, well, even you know what that is, yeah, Phil. I do. That's part of a mosaic floor. That was quick. Tiny bits of stone like these are called tesserae, the building blocks of a mosaic. Let's hope that's a good omen of things to come. Oh! Oh! <laughs> well, it's not bad, is it, for the first... <laughs> the first bit of the first trench? We've got a tesserae and we've got a coin. Do you know, there's only 12 coins recorded from this site so far from the antiquarian, so... Lucky 13. <laughs> <laughs> so, a piece of tessera, a Roman coin, and also a lot of demolition rubble. All good signs of a villa knocking around somewhere. Phil, how's your trench coming along? Really well, Tony. Is this all stuff that was excavated in 1861? That is the really good news. All this material looks so structured. In other words, we think it, it's undisturbed. We don't think it's ever been dug before. And the really nice thing is it's got these really big stones in. The plough will have bounced over that. If there are floors underneath here, they should be really well preserved. Any finds? Absolutely. We've got our first coins, third and fourth century coins. We really are on the money. Fantastic. Well, that's the good news. The bad news is that the weather's getting worse and the forecast is absolutely terrible. But then it would be. This is time to. Welcome back to Mid Somerset, where we're looking for two lost Roman mosaics, which were originally found here in the mid 1800s. And of course, we're looking for the Roman villa that would have been associated with them. And look at this glorious geophys. We've got walls, corridors, possibly rooms here. Looks like a Roman villa, doesn't it? And if you look in this trench, you can see plenty of what's apparently Roman stuff. There's Roman coins to go with it, but none of what we've got here would appear to have the mosaics underneath it because it's all been undisturbed. So, Mick, when are we going to put in our second trench to find whoa, the mosaics? Whoa, 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 slow down a bit, slow down, slow down. There's a lot of work to be done here. And I think if you don't mind me saying it, we shouldn't be pursuing where the 19th century walls and mosaics were. They are an indication of what there is in this field, but the geophysics shows us there's a big site here which we need to look at. We shouldn't really be pursuing what they found earlier. We should start again with our new information. Looking for? Well, looking for walls, dating material, pottery, stuff like that. Rather than a 26-foot Roman mosaic? Yeah, we, we almost certainly will find more mosaics. I'm sure they are not the only two on the site, but we need some context and data material to go with it. You could bear to be here for three days yep. without finding those mosaics yeah. at all, wouldn't you? Absolutely. If we found 5th century pottery, that would be fantastic. And more and better mosaics? And more of the 5th century pottery. And more and better mosaics. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, as Mick says, we're not just chasing mosaics. We want to build up a complete picture of this house. What did it look like? When was it built? And did it end along with the Roman occupation of Britain in the 5th century? Well, the good news is that Phil's found our first wall. The bad news... That is not a classic wall of a Roman villa, is it? It ain't pretty. It's not made out of well-dressed masonry. It's actually a fairly crude herringbone. Yeah, but you've got to think about all the other walls and what might be around it, because, look, I've been tidying up down here. Yeah. And it looks for all the world as though I've actually got another wall there. With the eye of faith, there is an edge 
coming along like that. Yeah. Now, granted, that edge is at right angles mm. to that wall. With the gravelly stuff underneath it, so the gravelly stuff is earlier, and the gravelly stuff is sitting on the top of this wall, so I think that wall is later than, if this is a wall, than this wall. I, I, I know you think I go on about <laughs> this all the time. Yeah, you do. But why can't we be looking at a whole series of late or post-Roman, mm, rather exactly. shoddily built timber patchwork stuff, you know, for, for late, late in the life of the site? Phil's discovery has got us scratching our heads. Do we have an early villa with a later or even post-Roman one on top? The answer, as always, is in the dirt and the little details. Uh, look at that. Wow, it's a really nice brooch. Can you date it? Yeah, it's first or second century. It's quite an early brooch. Um, it's, it's what's known as a dolphin brooch. Because of the shape of it? Yeah. Some of the finds are helping us to date the buildings, like this second century brooch from the time of the Emperor Hadrian. But others aren't quite so straightforward. Oh, it's a classic Roman type knife. Is it? Yeah, quite a late one. You've got a little rise just there above the tang. But isn't it a bit unusual for that, the tang to be doing that? rather than widening out on the other plate. Which brings to mind another interpretation. Okay. It's one half of a pair of shears. Ah, yeah. yeah, you're right, Alan. So it's not a late classic Roman knife? Well, that line is just like a late Roman classic knife. I'm going to dig my heels in on that. Right. Line. But, yeah. but I reserve the right <laughs> to change my mind. <laughs> The only way to narrow down the date of our villa, or should it be villas, is to investigate a wider area. John thinks he's identified another set of rooms, which might also be where the Victorians dug. My thoughts were if we put the trench that went over that boundary ditch and across this range of rooms here yeah. and this corridor, because we know we've got that early plan, yeah. And it fits in somewhere along this line. We don't know exactly where. So we might pick up the earlier excavation as well on this one, you think? That's a chance. Yeah. And, and the why I like it is we've got this very clearly defined corridor with these white lines which are the walls. But it kind of stops here, almost as if the corridor is leading into a big room here. And just imagine a larger room here. We'd have this fantastic southward view, wouldn't it, yeah. over the hills? Straight over the valley down yeah. in that direction, yeah. So our second trench goes in just a few metres away from our first to see if we've got a high-status room in the middle of the villa with one of the mosaics in it. And bang on target, guess what we find? Yeah. Woohoo! Tracy, there are excited whispers from the other trench that you've found a little bit of mosaic. We have, Tony, yeah. I mean, you can see we've got a little bit in here and then a bit beyond where Rapshaw's working. A little bit of a mosaic. Come on, Tony, it's carrying on underneath here, so I think we're going to have to extend the trench back this way. There's a gap in the middle there. Do you think you have accidentally hit it? No, we didn't hit it. Um, it's most probably plough damage. If you actually look at the section, we're not that far from the top mm. at all. So John's looking pretty pleased with his geophysics. But it turns out that the mosaic isn't quite where he thought it should be. I don't understand. I thought Geophys was saying that this area here was outside the building. That's right. Well, you wouldn't have a mosaic outside a building, would you? Nope. So they're wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Could be a patio. <laughs> hmm, back to the drawing board. Still, it is a mosaic, but is it one of the ones we're looking for? This morning, Mick promised me that by the end of the day, we'd have found the two long-lost Roman mosaics. Well, the threatened rain's coming in, it's time to knock off, and we still haven't found them. Instead, we found something much better, our own previously undiscovered mosaic. It seems to be part of a corridor which goes in that direction and a long way in that direction into some rooms. And what's in the rooms? We'll find out tomorrow.
welcome to sunny Somerset, where we're looking for two lost Roman mosaics. And the exciting news last night was that we've discovered a third previously undiscovered one. At least, that's what some of the archaeologists are saying. Mick, yesterday evening you were adamant that this mosaic was one that hadn't been seen since Roman times, and it wasn't one of the ones that were rediscovered in the 19th century. Yeah. But this is one of the two that were found by the antiquarian. Yeah. And this one is blue and white. That one is blue and white. That one has got a lot of long blue lines in it. This one has got a lot of long blue lines in it. This one has got rectangles. That one has got rectangles. Yeah. Do I need to say any more? Yeah, but the thing is, the blue and white is the local geology, right? It, the lias occurs as blue lias or white lias. So they're getting this locally, and my guess is that all the corridors in the villa are, are filled up with this stuff, because they, they can do this very quickly and easily. Maybe, but that doesn't answer the question why that one isn't this one. Well, it's, it's certain, Tony, because overlying the mosaic, this is demolition material, the smashing up of the roof, the actual taking apart of the villa. This stuff has never been disturbed before. Yeah, that's what intrigues me. I thought you would be really excited by the mosaic, but it's all the rubbish, all the detritus oh, on yes. top of it that's really exercising your imagination. It's, Why? It's the story of the end of the villa. It's the story after the mosaic floor was laid down. I mean, look, see that burning there? It's like someone's setting a bonfire into their well, expensive mosaic, mosaic yeah. but, you know, 50, 100 years yeah. later, they, they don't bother anymore. Stop worrying about the end of the villa, chaps. We haven't even worked out how it started yet. Or what happened in between, come to think of it. It's time to step up a gear. Our first task for day two is to find where the corridor mosaic leads to because at the end of it could be a room with the posh mosaics we've been asked to track down. 5.18 metres on one axis. One eight. Yep. So landscape investigator Stuart Ainsworth is trying to align our corridor with the Victorian plans. So if you could drop that against the geophysics in the background. A highly technical approach known as guesswork. Just see if that fits Maybe along in between. Bit. I mean, that shows mm -hmm. that range would actually fit in the gap that we haven't dug yeah. in, <laughs> right, right between <laughs> the two trenches. Ironically. <laughs> Over in our other trench, Phil's testing his theory that we've actually got two walls from two villas. This wall we're saying is later than everything on this side. If we could confirm that it's later than everything on that side as well, that would be very useful. But we haven't really found any rooms yet. And the bad weather is starting to close in this morning. Even Phil's starting to get on a bit of a downer. Neil, what we've been, we've been digging here, I mean, we are talking about this being a villa, aren't we? Yeah, for sure. Well, now, according to the checklist that I've got on villas, I mean, I expect to find nice painted wall plaster, nice floors, maybe underfloor central heating and all the rest of it. We haven't got any of those sorts of things on this show. Does this mean that it, this is not a villa? Oh, it's definitely a villa, Phil, because, you know, it's got mosaic floors, it's got stone walls. But, yeah, it hasn't got painted plaster so far. I mean, there's no evidence of hypercourse or ba bathhouses at all, is there? So I guess this is a kind of middle-range villa, not at the really top end, the really opulent, but not in the cow shed either. Well, uh, let's put that into modern-day speak. I mean, the people who are going to be living here, are they going to be, like, management, middle management, senior management, chief executive? It ain't going to be Joe who plows the fields, is it? No, it ain't going to be Joe. You know, the top 2% of the country, Phil, think about that. Oh, it's a senior manager. So you would be living in a building like this, I'd be living in a roundhouse. That is exactly how it would be. So while our villa owners weren't short of a bob or two, it's possible they didn't have quite enough money for top-of-the-range mod cons like underfloor heating. Even the local stone used in the mosaic seems a bit cut price. I love these things. What are they? They're actually spoon handles. Um, they've, they're nicely but if the villa was built on the cheap, some of the possessions inside were at least meant to look expensive. They've got this lovely metal coating on them, so originally they'd have looked like they were silver. 
They're also really nicely decorated and they've got a sharp point at one end so you could break open an egg with them. What's your favourite find? Well, as I'm a coin specialist, I always like to look at the coins first and there's a really nice 4th century Roman numus and it depicts Romulus and Remus being fed by the she-wolf. And they were the twins who founded Rome? Yep, the founders of Rome. And the other really interesting thing about this find is that um, it shows where it was made. Just underneath Romulus and Remus, there's the mint mark. And in this instance, it's one from Siscia, which is in modern Croatia. What do you think of this collection of finds? Is it what you'd have expected us to get? Yeah, for me, this is a typical villa assemblage. You've got this hint of early Roman activity, but most of the finds come from the third and fourth century. Why then? Well, in the fourth century, there was an explosion in the growth of villas in Britain. So this is exactly what we'd expect. For much of the Roman Empire, the fourth century was a time of turmoil, with rampaging barbarians and rival emperors. And across the Channel, Britain was doing pretty well. Upper middle class families on the make were earning money and spending it on villas and mosaics. Mid-afternoon, and Stuart's finished cross-referencing the Geophys and the Victorian plans. And now reckons the mosaics should be right between our two trenches, at the western end of the corridor. Well, let's hope he's right. The cold wind is now really starting to bite, and everybody's crossing their fingers that the mosaics will turn up soon. looking for I think you'll find look at that look at that right, right on the money oh. this is great news another mosaic <laughs> but is this one of the two we're looking for you've got the dog tooth pattern yeah. which you've got there then the band of interlacing yeah. sort of knot work with the red with the red tessery picking out the strand so the only place we can be the big star is just there. about there. Although it's still very muddy, this must be one of the mosaics we've been asked to look for. This is a smaller room here with this mosaic in. The division between the rooms should be about here in this train. And like buses, you wait for ages in the cold for one mosaic... Whoa! ..and two come along at once. Have a look. Yeah, what have you got down there? Well, you've got this kind of brickwork pattern, then a, a grey band coming along yeah. and turning a corner. Well, that looks the, pretty much like this stuff here. You see, this, that's where you were in the other one down yeah. there. Right. And you should be just coming into that block. area there, yeah. coming across at that angle. Well, look, here it is, Stuart. Look, it's, you've got one grey block here, and then we've got white and another band of grey where Tracy is. The whole thing looks to be intact, as if it's not been eaten to at all. Mm. So at last we've got our two mosaics sitting next to each other. But how much has actually survived? Another hour's digging brings some worrying news. There's a bit missing, all this bit here. Yeah, we seem to have lost its end since, you know, 150 years ago. It looks remarkably neat, doesn't it, that line? Just this cut here, yeah. it does look a bit suspicious. Almost as if a Moncton actually took it up and took it home, yeah. put it on his mantelpiece. It's still a beautiful thing, though. Imagine all the hundreds of posh sandal feet that must have walked over that. Yeah, and not just the posh guys, because there's a whole army of slaves and servants that were needed to keep a house of this style and status running, bringing all those essential functions that we kind of take for granted today. Uh, would the slaves have been... English people, or would they have been shipped here from abroad? Oh, I think almost certainly locals, really, because, you know, pe people were born into slavery. It's hereditary. It's not their choice. There's still always that, essentially, you are the slave and I am the master. In the end, you had the choice of almost life and death over them, and that was quite a brutalising relationship, really.
In order to demonstrate just how vital a part Roman slaves would have played in the economy around here, we're going to do an experiment. We are creating our own slave who for 24 hours will do what we tell him to do. We've got a volunteer. Can you come out, volunteer? Matt, thank you for saying you'll do this. Welcome. Here are your clothes. <laughs> You're smiling now, but actually we're going to take this very seriously. In fact, we're going to be quite tough slave masters, as a lot of them were. You are not allowed to speak to any of us unless we speak to you, OK? And that goes for everyone. Everyone. Anybody asks you to do anything, you just do it. All right? OK. Off you go. He's still laughing, bless him. Not for much longer. Very good, very good indeed. Thank Not you. Not quite sure about the boots and the uh, socks, but, uh, well, that's it, really. Off I've got go. a couple of questions, actually, before we start. What did I say? What did I say? You don't speak unless you're spoken to. Permission to you to speak to me, sir? No! Permission denied. Off you go. I couldn't quite get into this. It's likely villa slaves would have had specific functions, some to work in the house, some out in the cold on the farm. But we've only got one, so he's going to have to do everything. His first task is to wash the mud off our motorised chariot before serving tea to a bunch of cold and soggy archaeologists. They're wet. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> Oi, slave, stop eating the cake. I'm sure he's not meant to do that. Back outside, geophys have now surveyed a huge area. We've got lots of unusual features and maybe a second range of buildings to the southwest. Well, the thing that strikes me about the geophysics, Mick, is that there's a very clearly defined rectangular block here. Right. And then it seems to reduce slightly in thickness before carrying on, which suggests to me that there's more than one phase. This could be an add-on. So you think we might have an earlier building there and then yeah. add stuff onto it? Yes. So we'd not only get the condition, we'd get some chronology into it That's as well. Right. Also, the question is, what's the status of this range? Is this a villa which is like L-shape with both wings of equal status? Yeah. Or is this the working range? Yeah. So I think if we do do a trench, we should try and look inside one of these rooms to try and get evidence of chronology, status and function. Yeah. So trench three goes in to see if we've got an L-shaped villa with a western range. All villas would have had a farm and as punishment for cake stealing, Matt's going to be banished to work on ours. But as we haven't actually got a farm, we've lent him to the next door villa owners. Aren't we generous? All right, get to work. There's always someone better off than a slave, isn't there, Matt? It's now nearly the end of the day, and our work on the corridor mosaic is almost done. How's this coming along? I think we're pretty well finished with this trench now. I think we've, we've got a little bit of cleaning up to do and some drawing, and then, and then I think we'll backfill it. Close it up again, our lovely mosaic. Yeah, well, obviously, that's got to be protected with some terum and sand and stuff like that, but I think we've learned all we can from it. Have we learned that much? Yeah, well, what we have shown is that it's actually pretty trashed in this trench, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, the mosaic is you know, pretty bitty. This wall here, you look in that section there, they've pinched every useful bit of stone out of it. I think we understand the story here, which is actually basically one of robbing and ploughing and collapse. It's a shame so much of our corridor mosaic's missing but we've found enough to say that it ran along the front of the Northern Range. Even 
even though the weather has been pretty dreadful and freezing cold, it's been a good day for us with little bits of mosaic popping up all over the place. But as the day's gone on, our archaeologists have become more and more interested in something which I'd hardly even noticed on the 1861 drawing. It's this circle here, and it says in it, well filled up with rubbish. And that well would be over there somewhere. And apparently it's Roman rubbish that's in it, and we all know what the Romans put in the bottom of their wells, sacred objects, so who knows what we might find tomorrow. Thirsty work, eh, Phil? Oh, too right. Slave? Oh, oh I've got some from me. And the sun's coming out again. Yeah, I know. What a lovely day. Salute. Salute. Ten AM day three and something's not quite right. The diggers have fallen silent, and the only sign of movement is Matt our slave carrying a portable heater. With a bit of wind chill factor of almost minus ten, we've called everything to a halt. Right, thanks for all for coming down. As you know, it it's is quarter past freezing 10. out there. We've, We've lost nearly two hours rain, digging. Everyone's stopped. Rain. I mean, as far as I can see a bit, that L-shaped trench is... Well, that's, is... that's the only one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but although you're saying that's the only one, yeah. that's one of the big problems comes in, yeah. because it is too cold to go it's out there. We can't do it. it. Yeah. The yeah. best yeah. shelter will, if not some form of windbreak for you, and at least try and stop the cold getting to you. Until we get a windbreak, we ain't digging out there. OK, that's fair enough. For even Phil to down tools for the first time in 18 years, things must be bad. It's turning out to be one of the toughest digs we've ever had. To save our strength, we've decided not to open any more trenches, which is just as well because there's a heck of a lot to resolve today. We need to clean up our mosaics, Nail down whether we've got two building phases in Trench 1 and see if we've got a western range. We've also got to put up tents to protect the delicate archaeology from the elements and bring in windbreaks for the not-so-fragile digging team. That's one hell of a parasol. Phil, you managed to do some digging at last. It's quite cosy in here, Tony. Well, it's not so bad when the wind drops, is no, it? No, but it's very, very nice to be in the shade of that van. So what have we got? Well, what we've managed to find now is this main wall here, which is the end wall of this main villa complex that's yeah. coming down here. And you can see that it's actually made of these pitch stones, which is exactly the same construction that we had, the slightly later wall in Trench 1. So, have you any idea at all what period this wall could be? <sighs> Only very loosely. We know that the earliest wall that we've got up there was probably second century, and we know the mosaics of the fourth century, so I guess this wall is going to be somewhere in between or maybe fourth century itself. And what's all this stuff on either side of it? Well, we, we can see one of the things we've got is a lot of burning, and we wonder whether or not these walls here are, are actually just foundation walls for timber frame building. You can build perfectly good timber frame villas um, that will stand up, perfectly good roofs. This is probably a lot of this is going to be probably roofing slates. It's going to be a really substantial building. So we've definitely got an L shaped villa with a western range, which looks like it was built in the third or fourth century. That's the period we think our mosaics date from. And we're now busy scraping and sponging away centuries of mud to reveal the patterns underneath. The design would have been bright, but basic. On the first day, I was saying to Tony that I thought these mosaics found in the 19th century were a bit ordinary, really. I can see what you're driving at. Yes, at first glance, they are sort of, you know, just blue and white. Yeah. But right. these look like mosaics of, of very good competent execution and style. Yeah. What I find fascinating is that this range is producing a large number of mosaics, and I think it says something about yeah. the wealth here. These are people who are almost certainly 
Romanised Britons living right on the edge of empire. So they're not but, Romans at all, really? No, but they, they are consciously commissioning and displaying for all that come that they are buying into this part of the Roman dream. Someone else who's living the Roman dream is our silent slave for 24 hours, Matthias Williamus. He's been up early boiling water and cleaning the muddy toilet floor. And if that wasn't bad enough, by mid-morning he's quite frankly being exploited by the more unscrupulous members of the team. Yeah, back. Yeah, and back, back again. That's no good, Jimmy. He's got magnetic boots on. Oh. Get those boots off. But what happened to the slaves and all the other people living in the villa after Rome abandoned Britain in the 5th century? Nice big chunky rim shirts there, aren't they? Yeah. But what's really it seems they at least tried to keep on living here. We've got three sherds here, including a conjoining pair, uh, of this black burnish ware that's been identified as the very latest product. Yeah, it dates to the 5th century, doesn't that's it? That's right. This is the stuff that's still being produced in the opening decades after 400 AD. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's got decoration just lightly burnished in one direction, and it's from quite a squat jar with a big inverted rim. But the lovely thing is that we can now say that we, we recognise Roman type pottery that's still continuing into the opening decades of the fifth century. Yeah, well, I've got a coin here which dates from right at the end of the fourth century. It was probably in circulation into the fifth. Yeah. Um, it's a numus and it's of the Emperor Theodosius. Oh, yeah. So it's really nice to get one of the latest coins that yeah. were supplied to Britain here yeah. on this site. That's good, isn't it? Coin, pot, and we're going beyond the end of Roman Britain here into yeah. the opening years of the 5th century. Yeah, well... It's lovely. The coin and the 5th century pottery suggest that life carried on in our villa after the Roman Empire is supposed to have collapsed. Traditionally, that's the year 410, when the Goths sacked Rome. The news of that event would have reverberated around the Empire. Goth sack Rome, read all about it. Even as far away as our villa in chilly Somerset. So what do you think the effect would have been on all the people who lived in the villas in Somerset and Gloucester when they realised that the Romans weren't coming back? I think at one level it would have been quite a psychological blow. But I think in this part of the world, they would still view themselves as part of the Latin world, the Roman world. They may even have thought this is only a temporary break and soon there will be a new set of Roman administrators. So you'd have had all these people desperately trying to keep up Roman appearances, even though the very Roman stuff that supported them was gradually dribbling away. Yeah, all those skills that went with it that you could support, mosaicists and things like that, people are going to be looking more and more at subsistence, really, surviving and getting through, but still with this echo of, of a Roman heritage, probably lasting for another 100, 150 years. It's wonderful to think that people in our villa might have been clinging on to the Roman way of life against the odds. Just like Matt, our experimental slave, whose final official task is to prepare the dining room for lunch. Serviette, madam. Thank you. Sir? Whilst you're at it, can you comb my hair? It's been in a bit of a state. And the boots will want cleaning. See to it. Very good, sir. Oh. Come on, get on with it. I've got work to do. A bit more like it. Right, boy, I want you to sort this mop out, please. You start from the, the bottom up. <laughs> I've got nowhere left. Lunch and a good boot wash have given Phil the time to mull things over. I think this part of this trench is actually crucially important to the whole story here right. because we've actually got 
two walls yeah. of two different dates. We've got that wall down there, which is the earliest wall. This is the one with the square corner. Crucially, we've got some pottery from that, and it's second century. Oh, crikey, so that's well early on there. Absolutely. Right. But what I think I can say is that maybe this wall may well go with this cobbled surface, because this, this yard surface goes underneath this wall there. But what, like I say, what is crucial is that it does stretch the life of the yeah. villa by so much. And actually, that's that's not uncommon around here, that you start with a smaller villa building, simpler, and then bolt other stuff onto it to make a big complex. Phil's confirmed that we've got a second century house which was remodelled and expanded into an L-shaped villa in the fourth century. All along, we've assumed that the northern building came first and that the early wall in Trench 1 belonged to it. But then Phil makes a surprising discovery in the western range. Oh, what have you got there, Alan? Well, it's face of a wall. That's good. Yeah. Those facing stones are flat again. And that's exactly the same building uh, technique that we had up there in the first trench that we out. I'm convinced that if you've got these flat slabs, it's the early wall, and if it's pitched, it's the later one. The two second century walls appear to be part of the same building. And it makes us realise that we've been looking at the villa the wrong way round. We now know it began life as a simple stone building, not in the north, but in the west, sometime in the second century. Then, as the owner's social fortunes improved, they added a second range, which was half-timbered, to the north in the third or fourth centuries. And that was the one which included the mosaics. But the renovation seems to have been done on the cheap. The walls were of rough pitch stone. Even the mosaics were made from local material. And it's possible that the plain old wing became the servants' quarters. Talking of servants, it's time to give our slave his freedom. Matt, you've still got your slave's costume on. Yeah. The 24 hours is over. I'm free? Yeah. Oof, great. You're right. Oh, that's better. What was it like? Well, to be honest, the physical work wasn't too bad. It was no worse than the digging I do every time we do a time team. So what did get under your skin? Um, I think I think what I noticed the most was a kind of loneliness. Uh, you couldn't have a chat at lunchtime. You couldn't even say hello to people when they walked past you. So I was silent all the time, and you kind of felt very isolated after a while. How did people treat you? I was obviously briefed on how to be a slave, but um, that meant everyone else had to act like slave owners towards me, and I think that was quite difficult. I found it really easy to shout at you. Oh, yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> As the day draws to an end, the sun and the colour in the mosaics are starting to shine through. Sadly, they've deteriorated since they were last seen 150 years ago, probably from ploughing. But at least we've ensured that they'll be protected in future. Is this one room or two rooms or what? Yes, it's both. <laughs> it's what's called a bipartite room. Two rooms that operate as one. You've got like your entrance hall almost with this lovely mosaic that's really sort of vibrant with its colours now that it's been sponged down. Then you can see here that we've got this semicircular footing. Yeah. What we might have here is like half column actually attached to the wall, rising up with a nice big decorative capital, in which case we're looking at a grand double doorway through the steps into here, or it's the pedestal base for a statue. Either way, we're looking at a very, very grand room. What would the walls have been like? Almost certainly richly decorated, painted wall plaster. But, of course, we haven't found much here because this has already been cleared out by Moncton in the 1860s. And that's not all. Curiously, we appear to have post holes driven into the mosaic floor. This act of vandalism is perhaps more evidence that life here struggled on after the end of Roman Britain. It's been quite an odd exercise for me, because we came here trying to find some grand aristocratic villa, 
But what we actually discovered was the end of a grand aristocratic villa. Yeah, we have. I mean, we've, we've almost looked at his final gasps of life of this building. What actually happens when that economy that underpins the existence of this house starts to fail? So you mean that when the Roman bureaucracy collapsed, there was nothing to support it? No, that's right. Money becomes worthless. So in the end, you can't actually afford to repair your house. You haven't got a means of doing it. What had been some great status symbol ends up just as an albatross around your neck. Absolutely right. And so I think what also might happen is you can't pay your servants or keep your slaves anymore. They might actually sort of run off. I mean, there are some Latin authors that talk about a group of, called the Burgundi, which are a band of sort of runaway slaves and brigands roaming around Britain and Gaul, ransacking and just nicking things. So actually, in, in rubble and burning, we're seeing the last days of Rome in Britain. Absolutely. It's really about the end of the Roman way of life, which is funded by the Roman economy. Over the past three days, we've unearthed a villa which mirrors the rise and fall of Roman Britain. A modest house which ended up with pretensions of grandeur. In its heyday, cheap blue and white lias mosaic corridors would have led into a large summer dining room. With our two mosaic floors, and on a fine day, views across the valley beyond. On the dining room table, perhaps the fake silver spoons we found. All in all, dare we say it, just a little bit chav. Home to a minor aristocrat, his or her family, and, of course, keeping the whole thing going in the background, servants and slaves. But the good times weren't to last. It struggled on into the 5th century, but the villa, along with Roman Britain, was past its sell-by date. It's nice to think that at the end of the Roman Empire, the local Brits were still keeping up standards with their beautiful mosaic floors and their reasonably well-appointed villas and, of course, that essential of Roman life, the slaves. Mind you, by the end of the empire, those guys were already heading for the hills. To ensure you catch all the latest updates, please do subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media and sign up to our newsletter and join us on Patreon.